Luke chapter number 2. Out of all the accounts of the birth of Jesus Christ, Luke 2 is my favorite. <clears throat> Maybe it's because of the Charlie Brown Christmas special, I don't know. <laughs> Probably, but I grew up with the Charlie Brown Christmas special. And Linus quoted it so well, and from the King James Bible as well, amen. Luke chapter number 2, beginning right at the outset, the beginning of the chapter. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria, and all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, under the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were, in the same country, shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. The angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. It came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. I think if we're not careful, we get more of an idea of this Christmas story from Hallmark than we do the Bible. Hallmark can paint some beautiful pictures and depict some beautiful things, but uh, they don't, commercialism doesn't always get it right. And um, they don't always get it biblically correct. Uh, I don't know if if some of you realize this, but the, the wise men didn't show up at the manger. They came a little bit later, bearing their gifts. So usually the scene that we see painted or pictured for us has the wise men and the shepherds together, but they came separately, most likely when Jesus was a little bit older, just a very, very young toddler. Uh, so we may get some misconceptions if we strictly go by what we see on a, on a Christmas card uh, rather than what the Bible actually says. And usually when we see a picture of shepherds, we see shepherds as being very contemplative, wise, quiet, respected, uh, but they really weren't. Uh, I mentioned this morning about David, who was a shepherd, and when they were looking for the next king, they left David out in the field because he sort of got the task that nobody else wanted. 
And the job that nobody else wanted was taking care of the sheep. And so the, the youngest of the family, the one who got the, the leftover jobs, got the shepherding job. Uh, being a shepherd was not an esteemed position. It wasn't a, a glorified job. It wasn't a respected uh, job. It was a despised occupation, and because it was a despised occupation, you can imagine sometimes the type of people that would sign up for that job. Uh, they were rough characters. They were sometimes shifty characters who liked to be on the move or under the radar, and, and uh, sometimes they were even dishonest, and they would take the sheep, and, and um, Jesus alluded to that when he said, there's good shepherds and there's bad shepherds. He said, I'm the good shepherd. I'm not just a hireling watching sheep just for a paycheck. He said, I love my sheep. And so there were shepherds that didn't love the sheep and didn't care much for honesty and integrity. They were just looking for a quick dollar and, and just trying to get through a day's work. I believe these shepherds were good men. When I say good men, I say that a little carefully because none of us are really good. The Bible says there's none good, no, not one. Not one of us is good. Someone says, well, he's a good man. No, we're not. Nobody is. Uh, we're all sinners. Thank God we can be saved by grace, but we're all sinners. But I do believe that these shepherds were uh, honest, and I believe that they were sincere. And in my own estimation, I believe the angels appeared to them with this great announcement because they would receive it well. The angels did not give the announcement to Herod. They did not give the announcement to those who were in regal places, they did not give the announcement to those that were of high estate. They gave the announcement to some shifty shepherds who were somewhat unrespected. But I think from this text there's a few things that we can gather, and I promise you I will not be long, but can you see that God spoke to them in their routine? The Bible says they were keeping watch over their flock by night. This was a 24-hour thing. When you were a shepherd, you didn't punch out. You stayed with the sheep 24 hours a day. And in the evening, your routine was to sort of allow the sheep to rest and allow them to lay in the coolness of the night. And it was your chance to rest. It was your chance to get a little recovery from a long day and here these shepherds were in their routine living the ordinary life the kind of life that they lived day after day the kind of routine that they experienced day after day the same things that they did day in and day out watch the sheep during the day move the sheep to a new pasture let them find some water keep your eyes out for predators and at night just get some rest it was their routine and the message of the Messiah broke onto them in their routine. I'm glad that the message of the gospel broke to me in my routine. I don't have time to give my entire testimony tonight, but I was a kid like any other kid. Playing baseball, riding bicycles, playing dirt cars with the, building little roads in the dirt in the front yard, having fun, hide and seek and tag and all those things and riding my big wheel sometimes. I was just a normal kid in my normal routine. But the gospel of Jesus Christ got me. Now if you're saved tonight, I don't know what your normal routine was, but tonight we can be thankful that the gospel of Jesus Christ came upon us in the normalcy of our routine. For some of you, is at work. For some of you, you had a coworker that loved you and cared for you and believed in Jesus Christ and was born again and wanted you to hear about the good news. Think about Bob's testimony. He was in the military over in England, doing what you do in the military, and the gospel broke in on him. What about you? I'm glad that God gives the message in our routine. I'm glad that God still speaks in the routine of life. And then he had to correct these shepherds' emotions. Satan likes to play on our emotions. Um, 
The Bible says that when the angel appeared to these shepherds, they were not just afraid, they were what? Sore afraid. That's petrified. That's scared out of my mind. That's I'm going to run forever and not stop running. It's kind of scared. And so because they were so afraid, the angel, his first two words were, fear not. Don't be afraid. I find today that when it comes to the gospel, Satan is playing on people's minds. He's playing with people's minds. He plants thoughts in people's minds that are not true. You know one of the things he plants in people's minds? If you get saved, your life will be miserable. And those of us that are saved know that nothing is further from the truth than that. To know Jesus Christ as our Savior is what brings you joy. To know the Lord Jesus as your Savior and to walk with him is what brings you fullness. Jesus said, I have not come to destroy life, I've come to give it and that you might have it more abundantly, Jesus said. Oh, but how Satan plays on the minds and, and manipulates emotions. And it was justified emotions. I'm not saying that it was unjustified. The Old Testament ended with a curse. And so for these shepherds, after 400 years of silence from God, we call it the inter testamental period between Malachi and Matthew there was just nothing from God and the last thing they knew as the Old Testament closed was that God had a curse upon mankind and we were hopeless and we were lost and we were being judged and there's nothing we could do it's the last thing they knew so for an angel to spring on the scene they probably thought that there was some kind of judgment coming now and we're going to get it now Their emotions were that of fear. But when the angel said, fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. I'm so thankful that the gospel corrects our emotions. I'm glad that the real gospel corrects the falsehoods that Satan will plant in our mind. And to be saved and to know the Lord Jesus as our Savior and to go all in with Christ Jesus, what a terrific choice that is. Right, church family? What a terrific choice that is. The angel corrected their emotions and so the shepherd said, let's go see. The angel said, don't be afraid, for unto you is born this day in the city of David, which is Bethlehem, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. So they said, let's go see. Let's go look. They made their way to Bethlehem and they found that, they found that, they found that manger. And they found the babe, just as the angel said, wrapped in swaddling clothes. And there those shepherds had it confirmed to them that God does give real joy. And then how about the changed life? This is the last thing I'll say, the changed life. The Bible says that after they had saw Jesus Christ, in verse number 15, they made haste and found Mary. It says in verse number 17 that when they had seen it, now this is after they had witnessed, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child, and all they that heard it, this is verse 18, wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds, but Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Now look at verse number 20. And the shepherds returned, glorifying God and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. The Bible says the shepherds returned. Returned where? Returned back to some sheep on a hillside. Now in the New Testament there were some uh, that left their profession. Peter left the ship in the nets and followed Jesus. He was done fishing, right, church family? He was done fishing, following Christ. And he left the boats and left the nets and Andrew with him and said, we're following the Lord, we're done fishing. But what's so interesting about these shepherds is they went back to shepherding, but they were different shepherds now. You know, when you get saved, you, you, you still work in the office, you still run your little business. You're still a father. Um, you still got to take care of the house. And you still work at the factory. And still got to pay the bills. But you're different. When you get saved, you're different. And these, these uh, shepherds were changed men. 
They returned to those sheep and they returned to that hillside, but they were different now. They had witnessed the change that comes through the gospel, the word of God, the living word of God, Jesus Christ, because they knew that Jesus means Savior and he shall save his people from their sins. And that was the message that changed their life. They were so excited about this. They were still shepherds, but I've already read it and I won't read it again. The Bible says they couldn't stop telling people about it. Did you catch that in the story? They were still shepherds, but man, they couldn't stop telling people about what they had seen and heard. I'm glad I'm saved tonight. I'm thankful I'm born again. I'm so glad that God allowed me to hear the gospel. Somebody shared the gospel with me. I'm glad that Jesus Christ came to die for my sins, and I'm glad that I've trusted in him for my salvation. I'm glad that Christmas is more than just a history lesson. It's a family story for me. It's more than just about a historical character. It is about the birth of my friend and my Savior, Jesus Christ. And my life has been changed. As I close the scriptures tonight, I do want to tell as many people as I can about Jesus because he's a wonderful Lord. And especially this upcoming year, let's ask God to help us have the message of the gospel on our lips a little more than it has been in 2017. Be a little more apt to pass out a tract, a little more apt to talk to somebody about the Lord, a little bit more quick to bring Jesus Christ into the conversation because... If we've truly witnessed him, it will change what we say. Indeed, it will. And if you're not saved tonight, if you're not really sure about all these things I'm talking about, if you were to die, you're not for sure if heaven would be your home and not even really sure how a person can avoid hell, I can tell you this, it's only through Jesus Christ. There is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. It's only him. And he came and he died for you. I'm glad that he comes in our routine, that he corrects our emotions, and that we leave with changed lives and a renewed message. So tonight as we sing, we're going to sing Silent Night in just a moment, and we'll begin to distribute that light uh, down through the sanctuary tonight as we sing. Whenever that, when you see that light start to move towards you, even before it gets towards you and one candle becomes two and two become four and four becomes eight, doesn't take long to light them all in this sanctuary. It goes very, very fast. When you begin to see that light come towards you, it's just sort of fun. If you're a Christian, if you've been saved by the grace of God, and if the Lord Jesus Christ has saved you and changed you, if that's you tonight, when that light starts coming towards you, I want you to think about how God brought that gospel message to you and how very thankful we should be that he did. That he did. And pray that We'll have the message on our lips a little more. Can we bow our heads for a prayer tonight?